Hello, welcome to Election Watch, uh, where political science meets with statistics. And remember that this is the only scientific analysis program on air brought to you by your Election Command Center uh, in collaboration with the Governance Research Bureau. Once again, Dr. Kwame Asasanti and Dr. Ezekiel Norte, our experts from the University of Ghana Political Science Department and the Actuarial Science and Statistics Department of the same university are here to help us uh, determine the winning formula. Now, last week, we predicted uh, that the ruling New Patriotic Party had the urge to win the Western region uh, when it comes to the uh, presidential elections there. We even went ahead to give both parties the winning formula. In fact, that's uh, uh, the, the, that's free uh, consultation there in relations to the quantitative data. If you missed it, you can just log on to uh, YouTube and go to TV3 Library and search for the Election Watch videos right there. Now, today, we're continuing with the analysis of the Western region by focusing on uh, parliamentary elections. Critical question, what does the data say about the various constituencies in the region? And what is the winning formula? That's what we're going to tell you uh, today and in relation to parliamentary elections in the region. Remember that this is Election Watch, where political science meets with uh, statistics. Dr. Kwame Asasanti and Dr. Ezekiel Norte uh, will be joining us uh, pretty shortly. We'll be right back and I'll introduce them and we start with our show. Right, welcome to Election Watch, where political science meets with statistics. Uh, let me quickly introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Kwame Asa Asante from the Political Science Department of the University of Ghana. Uh, Doc, thanks very much for coming. Welcome. Thank you. And then Dr. Ezekiel Norte is with the uh, Statistics and Actuarial Science Department of the same university. Doc, uh, welcome. Our condolences uh, for the passing of your mother. We, we had very sad news mm -hmm. of uh, her demise, but may her soul rest in peace. So, right, so before we do the data analysis uh, and jump into the actual data and science, uh, Dr. Kwame Asasanti uh, will tell us, uh, give us a gist of what to expect uh, in today's presentation. Doc. Thanks, Steve. Uh, today, we are going to look at three things. One, as usual, we are going to look at the qualitative data and what it can help us to understand in terms of the voting dynamics in Western region. Two, we are going to look at qualitative de data today. Why? Because we are moving into constituencies and you need to have uh, a better understanding of the issues that inform voter choices. And the last one is that uh, if you watch all that we have done, we've been giving advice to political parties. This time around, we want to advise the voter in order to be able to make right choices during elections. That's right, uh, Dr. Kwame Asasante, thanks very much for giving us an idea, an idea of what to expect. I appreciate shortly when we get into the data and science, uh, Dr. Ezekiel Norte will be taking us through that. But let me remind you that this show is very interactive and you can join the conversation by posting your comments and questions on our various social media handles using the hashtag TV3 election watch. So before we get uh, Dr. Ezekiel Norte uh, to talk to us, let's uh, look at a brief video of the electoral patterns in the Western region. There were 19 constituencies in the Western region during the 1992 elections. Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings stood on the ticket of the NDC and won with 239,477, representing 60.7%. While Professor Edubwahin of the New Patriotic Party had 89,800, representing 22.8%. Dr. Hila Liman garnered 33,760, which was 8.6% of the votes. Kwabena Daku had 21,924, which was 5.6%, and Lieutenant General E. A. Eskin with 9,325 which was 2.4% of total vote cast. In 1996, there were three contenders for the presidential elections. Jerry John Rawlings of the NDC 
had 405,992, representing 57.3%. John Ajikum Kufo of the NPP got 289,730, representing 40.9%, and Dr. Edward Nasigri Mahama of the PNC getting 12,862,000, representing 1.8%. Seven people contested the 2000 presidential elections. Dan Latte of the GCPP had 5,268, which was 0.8%. The NDC, represented by Professor John Evans at Mills, had 273,355, which was 43.9% of the votes. Professor Hagen of the CPP had 18,066 and that was 2.9%. Edward Mahama stood on the ticket of the PNC and had 4,873, representing 0.8%. Dr. Charles Rekubrobe of the UGM had 1,498, representing 0.2%. Guzitano of the NRP had 4,735, which was 0.8%. Of the total votes cast. In 2004, John Ejekum Kufo of the NPP won in that region again with 463,990, representing 56.64%. He was followed by the NDC's John Atamills, who had 334,992, which represented 40.89%. Edward Mahama of the PNC had 6,935, representing 0.85%. George Agude garnered 13,245, representing 1.62%. However, in 2008, the New Patriotic Party, represented by Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado, won the region with 376,270 representing 47.55%. Edward Mahama of the PNC had 3,206, representing 0.41%. The NDC's John Evans at Mills polled 372,400, representing 47.06%. Emmanuel Lentri had 2,958, representing 0.37%. T. N. Ward Brew polled 1,041, representing 0.13%. Dr. Papakwisi Indum of the CPP had 33,251, which was 4.20% of the votes cast. Kwabne J. had 845, and that was 0.11%. Kwesi Amufa Yeboa had 1,297 which was 0.16%. In 2012, the NDC polled 582,193, while the NPP had 468,517. The GCPP contested the election that year and had 3,458 in the region and the PPP had 8,599 while the UFP had 746. The PNC was able to poll 1,274 and the CPP got 3,757. The only independent candidate had 1,215. Finally, in the 2016 elections, the NPP polled 526,159 of the votes in the region while the NDC followed with 455,838. The CPP had 3,096 and the PPP polled 15,643. The NDP had 1,777.
Welcome back to Election Watch, where political science meets with statistics. Uh, that was uh, a brief video about the electoral history in the Western region, which is our focus for uh, today. Before we let uh, Dr. Ezekiel Norte uh, start us in the data and science and get us from the various uh, constituencies, uh, Dr. Asa Asante, anything you want to say before uh, Dr. Ezekiel Norte takes... I think uh, we, are, we are okay, mm, we are ready. We are ready. So, uh, Doc, it's time for us to go into the actual data and science of the Western region focusing on parliamentary on elections. parliamentary elections. Mm. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Great. Um, so, our focus would be on the parliamentary elections. The model predicts a hunter West as MPP stronghold. Indeed, and MPP have been doing so well in a hunter with an estimated average percentage of 55.79, with estimated votes of 25,000 plus, and NDC having 38.2% with estimated votes of 17,000 plus. Uh, you would see that the model predicted a lower limit of 10,000 and an upper limit of 24,000 plus for NDC to expand. MPP could also further expand to about 35,000 plus. Mm. So we need to be mindful of that. Um, estimated votes for other parties put together was about 6%, uh, with the estimated average votes being um, 2,762, with um, a lower limit of a negative value, meaning they could even dwindle further to a zero, and an upper limit of 7,000, just a little over 7,000. Amenfi East is also projected as an MPP stronghold. MPP's estimated average is about 51%, with estimated votes of about 25,600 votes. NDC 47.36%, with estimated votes about 23,800 uh, 23, votes. Bibiani Ewiansu also an MPP stronghold. The estimated average is 51%, a little over 51%, which translates into 32,500 plus votes. And then DC, 46.8%, with estimated average votes of about 30,000 votes. And DC can expand to about 30,000. MPP could expand to about 33,000. So the difference is still clear. EFIA, also an MPP stronghold. Estimated average votes for MPP, 59%, with about 20,000 estimated votes. NDC, 38.4%, with an estimated vote of 13,000. Escado Ketan, another MPP stronghold. 58.73% as they are uh, estimated average, which translates into 24,000 plus votes. NDC gets 37.7, which translates into uh, 15,000 votes. When you look at their actual performance, when you just oppose it against uh, the 2016, uh, NDC got uh, 14,000, which is um, uh, a little below what uh, the model estimates. But MPP actually got close to, though it is below, close to their estimated average. Right. Question mean team, another MPP stronghold. 56.33% as estimated uh, with votes of 18,000 plus, NDC gets 27.8% with estimated votes of about just 9,000. They got below the estimated average for NDC in 2016. MPP had 
20,000 plus 2,000 extra of the estimated votes. It right. means that mm. they are still doing better than uh, NDC. Right. So, so, Doc, I mean, uh, when we look at the, the, the figures uh, you, you've gone through so far, uh, we, we, you, you keep mentioning that NDC, MPP could expand. I mean, it means that from their lower limit, they can reach a higher limit. It's, but there are all sorts of indicators that uh, result in this uh, expansion. And Dr. Kwame Asasan, you have been following the data. I needed to uh, talk to us about some of the things that don't show on this uh, quantitative data that are still relevant in the decision uh, to, to expand the votes, really. Yes. Uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, once you get to the constituency, you need to add to the quantitative data, qualitative mm. figures. And here, three qualitative variables are critical if you are going to Western region. One, as we need to know uh, which party has what it takes to be able to manage the economy for us. So economic issues are very important mm. to the voters in Western region. Not only that, you also want to understand that the parties or uh, whoever wants vote is really prepared to handle the infrastructure development of the country. What is the, the strategy that they have in order to be able to um, make sure that this country is full of infrastructure that will strengthen the frontiers of the country's economy. And the last one, uh, people are interested in knowing in Western reading as education. Mm. What are the messages that you have that will really influence their choices with regard to what education? These are three important mm. uh, variables that political parties, uh, individuals who want to contest election must be able so, to so, pay so attention So it's like to. human nature. I mean, people want a better life. People yeah. want good health. People want uh, good education. People want good roads and infrastructure. They want to go to, uh, their children go to school. They want yeah. to see agriculture flourish in, in the yeah. area. So these qualitative indicators yes. are crucial in each of the political parties. Uh, raising their numbers for the region, right? Yeah. Very right. So, uh, Dr. Zikinoto, you, you are now at second D. Another yes. So, MPP stronghold. Yes. Another MPP stronghold in second D. Their estimated average percentage is 55.3%, which translates into estimated votes of a little over 15,000. They actually got higher than that, uh, about 1,000 more in 2016. And NDC average have been 43% uh, with estimated votes of 12,000 votes, but they actually got less, 11,000. So you could see that MPP was doing well and deepening their lead in their stronghold. Takradi is another stronghold for MPP. Their estimated average votes is 65%, which translates into about 26,500 votes. They actually had something higher than their average, which is 27,000. They could expand it further to 27,750. NDC's estimated average is about 33%, which translates into vote, actual votes of 13,000. 556, but they actually had less than that. They had 11,000 in 2016, meaning here to NDC didn't do too well. Takwa Usuayem, another MPP stronghold. MPP's average is 57%, which translates into 40,000 plus votes. They actually had 42,000 plus votes. It means they got an extension of about 3,000 votes, 2,000 votes. NDC, an average of 40%, which translates in 28,590, but they actually had 24,000. They dwindled. A Memphis Central now becomes an NDC stronghold, predicted by the model. Their average is 52.65%. The estimated average votes is 19,400. But they actually had 17,800. A shy of about uh, 1,000 votes from their average. 
but it could expand to 22,756 mm -hmm. by the model. MPP, 46% with an estimated average votes of 17,000. They actually had 17,000 plus, mm -hmm. meaning they uh, performed better than their average. And Memphis West, also an NDC stronghold, with an estimated average of 58.6%, with estimated average votes being 25,000. They had 23,600. They are shy of the actual, the, uh, the estimated average by about 1,500 votes. MPP uh, average is 40% which translates into 17,000 um, 17, plus votes. But they had 70,336, which means that they were operating beyond their average. Awain, another NDC stronghold. About 54% estimated average, which translates into uh, 26,000 votes, but they actually had 22,000, uh, 4,000 last votes below. From uh, the NDC stronghold so far, the ones you've done, yes. suggest that they performed below, below their, their average, average in, in 2016. In 2016. Ir irrespective of the fact that traditionally these are their strongholds. These, these are their strongholds. Which, 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 so, which so, so it means that those votes they are not getting are either going to MPP or going to the they are going parties. to other parties. Interesting. That's what it means. Mm. Right. And you would see that MPP consistently either gets very close to their average or beyond their average, mm. meaning they are winning more souls to their camp. Mm. Bia East, another NDC stronghold, 66.7% estimated average, which translates into about 12,000 plus votes. They had about 11,000 votes, which means about a thousand gone down the dream. Either it goes to MPP or it goes to other parties, or they didn't vote at all. Estimated average for MPP in Bia East is 27%, which translates into uh, 4,965 votes. They actually had 4,995. So they were just operating at the average. their average. BR West, another NDC stronghold, 67% translates into 28,000 plus votes. They had 25,000. It means they dropped votes also in BR West. MPP's average by the model is 31%, which translates into 12,900 plus votes. They had 11,589. This was Few. below their average, but very close to their average. Bodhi, an NDC stronghold. Their estimated average 63.7% with estimated votes of 16,000 plus. They had 13,996, about 14,000. So they dropped votes of about 2,000 votes. MPP's average by the model is 34.9% with estimated average of 8,800 votes. They actually had 9,992, which means they have increased their estimated votes by 1,000. Mm. NDC dropped about 2,000. MPP gained about 1,000. So it means that they are actually benefiting from the non-performance of the NDC. the NDC. Joabuso. Joabuso is another NDC stronghold. But the model estimated their average performance as 50.9% with estimated votes of our 18,300. They actually had 17,200, about 1,000 plus votes gone down the drain. MPP, 34,000, uh, MPP, 34% estimated average. They had about 
the estimated vote corresponding to 34% was 11,949. Mm. But they actually had 15,000. Which is a lot plus, lot, Which lot is a more. lot more than their average. I mean, so they gained some from so the numbers lost by exactly. the NDC. And then exactly. they went further to even Exactly. Get so much that is more. the picture being painted mm. here. Prestia Uni Valley, another NDC stronghold. 50.3% for NDC, which translates into 35,900 plus votes. They actually had 32,000. They dropped about 3,000 votes. MPP, 47.47%, which translates into 33,800 plus votes, but they had 36,444 additional of about 2,000 plus votes gained by MPP in Pristia Uni Valley. Sashi Akontombra was predicted as NDC stronghold, 50.45%, which translates into estimated votes of 15,000 votes, but they had about 11,000. So they dropped votes also here. MPP 41%, which translated to about 12,000 plus votes. They had 11,922. Mm. They also dropped votes, but very close to their estimated yes. model's average. So Aman, also an NDC stronghold. Estimated average 55.47%, which translates into 7,887. They actually had 6,000, mm. a little over 6,000. They dropped votes. MPP 41.88%, which translates to eight, uh, 5,800 votes. They had 6,000 plus votes. Right. They gained. Do Dr. Zikinote, let, yes. let's get uh, Dr. Kwame Asasante to come in here. I mean, the, the patterns have been very clear. And in this instance, in the last slide that we saw, the MPP, uh, although made a, made a loss of about 1,000 below its average, it actually performed better than the NDC in its own uh, strong stronghold. Uh, what is this telling us? Yes, um, we have said, and we will repeat, that if you really want to win, you win in your stronghold and try to also capture some votes in your opponent's stronghold. And that's what the MPP is doing. But one thing about constituency election is that as soon as you get into the constituencies, you must be able to do a few things. One, you should be able to uh, check which of the issues are specific to the constituencies. And parties must take note of this. Look out for specific issues that affect the lives of the people mm. and develop messages around them. Um, those places where uh, they impose candidates on them, they must be able to address the issues before going for election. Otherwise, it's going to be used as message against them. Because, yes, you can have all the variables pointing positive towards you, but if there are specific issues unattended to, people will uh, take advantage of this and then develop messages against you. So the parties must be aware of this. Mm, interesting. Uh, so, Dr. Zikinote, you are now at Wasa, Wasa East, East, which is also another, another NDC stronghold. The, uh, NDC stronghold, predicted by the model as NDC stronghold. 54.7% for NDC, which translates into 18,500 plus votes. They actually got 17,920, a little below their estimated uh, average votes in 2016. MPP, 43.99%, about 44%, which translates into 14,951 votes. They actually had 15,900 votes. They had over 1,000 votes in addition in 2016. Ellen Belle, also predicted as NDC stronghold by the model, 55.15%. As estimated average, that translates into 24,800 plus votes. They actually had 23,425, a little below their estimated average. But let's look at MPP. 43%, that translates into 19,471. 
They actually had 20,875. Mm. They performed beyond the average, about 1,000 votes. Evalu Jura was predicted by the model as swing, swing going either way. Mm. It could go to NDC, it could go to NPP. With estimated average of about 49.67% for NDC, with the estimated average votes being 13,893, NDC actually had 12,416 in 2016's previous election, which means that they operated below their average. MPP, 48.8%, translates into 13,580, they had 14,000 in 2016. It means that they also performed around their average, but grew. So if this is anything to go by, it means that the pendulum is swinging towards MPP more than NDC from the picture we see here. Jomuru. Same for Jomuru. Same. <clears throat> Could go either way. NDC 36 Percent average performance translates into 17,946 for, for them. Uh, estimated average 29 percent translates into 18,000 for MPP. They actually got 14,000, which was below their average. NDC also had below their average. What this means is that either people were dissatisfied with the two dominant parties, so they didn't vote. Or all those votes went to other parties. So when you look at the estimated average for other parties, 34.7 percent. Wow. The estimated average votes, 17,000. They had 14,000. That was a lot. To that was a lot any, for other uh, parties. Substantial win for both the for NDC other, and MPP. Exactly. So in fact, Jomoro could go either way, but it could also go to other parties, other parties. by this performance. By this performance, yes. In Paul, another swing could either go the NDC way or the MPP way. But it favors MPP more than NDC. The estimated average for MPP 44.57% with estimated votes being 7,700 plus votes. They actually had be beyond that 8,000 plus votes. NDC's 38.23% translates into 6,600 votes. They had 6,900 plus votes. It means here NDC operated above their average, but very marginal. So both of them gained. It means that, where are they getting the voters? They are getting it from the other parties. Or they are winning more uh, sympathy from voters. Sergio also could go either way, NDC or MPP. Mm. But it favors NDC slightly. Their estimated average is about 49% that translates into uh, 29,000 votes. They actually had 26,000 votes, 3,000 below. When you look at the estimated votes for uh, MPP, 29,331. The actual vote was 31,000 plus votes. It means that they performed above their average. Shama. Shama. Also, the model predicted it going either, either way. way. But usually it goes more it goes in favor, in favor of, of MPP. MPP. Mm. Because their estimated average is almost close to 50%. 49.43%. Which translates into 18,660. They actually had 20,000 in 2016. It means that they performed above their average. Let's look at NDC, 44 point, about 44.5 percent. It translates into uh, votes of 16,798. They had 
15,000 plus votes. So they operated below their average. MPP projected above their average. So this means that if there's anything to go by, by the performance in 2016, Shamar could fall for MPP more than NDC. Right. And that, that wraps up uh, with uh, all the various constituencies in the uh, Western region. Thanks very much, uh, right. Dr. Thank Ezekiel you. Norte. This is still Election Watch. Remember, Election Watch is brought to you by Election Command Center and in collaboration with the Governance Research Bureau. You can still uh, interact with us via post, by posting your comments on, and questions on our social media handle through hashtag uh, TV3 election watch. We'll take a break and when we return, it will be time for the actual winning formula. Stay with us. Welcome back to Election Watch. Election Watch is where political science meets with statistics and is brought to you by Election Command Center in collaboration with the Governance Research Bureau. This is a segment we have all been waiting for and Dr. Kwame Asante is ready for the winning formula. Doc, uh, so winning formula yes. for parliamentary seats in the Western region for NDC. Yeah, before we go to the winning formula, um, I did say earlier on that we are going to make sure that we educate the voter as well, mm. not only the political parties. Mm. Um, in elections, we tend to have uh, political parties coming out with propaganda, mm. trying to deceive people into believing in what they are saying. Meanwhile, that's not the issue. Uh, we won. So the uh, electorate should be aware of some of very these much aware of some of these things. Mm. Uh, one uh, propaganda technique that they use often is bandwagon, where they go to rallies and then they take pictures and splash them on TV screens and then publish them in newspapers and telling the public that, ah, there are a lot of people who are with this political We party. have the numbers. So you should join. Mm. Meanwhile, the real issues are not being discussed. The real issues are not being attended to. Uh, we want voters to be very careful about this. Mm. Another one which I want to also touch on is the issue of name calling, name calling. They can just brand some people, give them certain names, and then you find it difficult to understand why they are doing so, uh, just to uh, deviate attention and get more votes from those people. Please, as voters, we should be very careful about this. Listen to parties that have messages, and listen to messages that will be able to inure to your benefit, mm. messages that will um, you know, influence uh, and, your life. And, and affects your and life positively. Messages mm. that will also go a long way to make you a better person. Any other thing, throw it into the lake of fire. Yes, uh, Dr. Kwame Azasanti. So what do we have as winning formula yes. for the NDC in the Western region? In order for NDC to be able to win the election, uh, they need to do two things. One, they should maintain their average performance or better in all the constituencies in Western region. Mm. Or they win at least 12 seats out of the total seats So they, they must set region. a target for themselves yes. to win 12 seats yes. at Just least. Um, hmm. Free consultancy for them. Yes. Uh, they should also uh, make sure that they win at least two of the following parliamentary seats. One, Evalu Jura. They should also win Jomoro or Mpoho, Waha, Mpoho or Sefi Yoso and Shama. They need to win at least two of the following. So, Doc, why so? I mean, at least two. I mean, what makes these, uh, uh, these constituencies critical to uh, the NDC's win? Is it the numbers? Is it the traditional pattern of voting? What yeah, exactly? Actually, it is, it, is, it is the numbers. Mm -hmm. It's a number game. Numbers game. So, you will see that each of the listed constituencies under two uh, could either go for MPP or NDC. Mm -hmm. So it means it's much easier wrestling for those six those. than strongholds of MPP. Interesting. Mm. And that is why it's so. Right. That makes sense. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Dr. Ezekiel Norte. 
And then we have the winning formula for the MPP. Yes. Now the winning formula for MPP. One, they either maintain average or better uh, performance in all the constituencies or win at least nine seats in the region. They should be able to do that. In addition to that, they need to win all the following parliamentary seats. Evaluate Jura, Jomoro, Mpoho, Seshuyoso, and mm -hmm. Shama. So, so, so Dr. Zikadote, I mean, yes. this is interesting for so, me because uh, the, the second condition is that they must win all, all mm -hmm. the six. What I, NDC I, I, only needs two. Needs two. Mm -hmm. Yes. The reason is that the model predicted nine safe seats for MPP, but predicted 12 uh, safe seats for NDC. Interesting. So when you compare the numbers, you would see that uh, NDC has a less task than, than MPP. MPP. Hmm. But looking at the performance they put up in 2016, if there's anything to go by, then these consequences may fall for, for MPP. MPP. Yes. Right. And once they fall for MPP, it's a straight win for them in that constituency. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so Dr. Sasanti, uh, how do we wrap up now with all these uh, winning formulas we've seen? Yes. I think we have given a lot for um, voters to be able to consider, as well as uh, political parties. One, you need to be able to master what we have in a winning formula. And then two, you need to be able to understand the messages that will influence the choices of voters in a particular constituency. You need to take into consideration uh, constituency specifics and build messages around. These are the things that will change the game. Please. Otherwise, uh, these people, uh, if they are not able to use this thing effectively, they would go home in tears. Go home in tears. So these are what makes the difference. And thanks very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Kwame Asasanti and Dr. Ezekiel Norte. That's where we wrap up with uh, today's episodes. Uh, in the previous episodes and today's episodes, we've given you uh, a very thorough grounding of the Western region. We've tackled uh, parliamentary. We've tackled uh, parliamentary. Join us again next week for another episode of Election Watch. And this time, we'll be going to the Ashanti region. Ashanti region is a stronghold, a traditional stronghold of the ruling MPP. Don't miss this crucial episode of Election Watch. Thanks very much for making time with us. Good afternoon and enjoy the rest of the weekend.